Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on this episode and I'm hoping that each and every one of you is having a fantastic time. So it's now been four years, almost even five years since Harry and Meghan left that salty island. But it seems like the salty island is very much obsessed with them. But all I'm seeing is the Sussexes making great moves and doing great in life. And there's nothing I love more than that. And I know that for them to see the Duke and Duchess of Sussex doing this great in life, even though they tried by all means to destroy them, I really makes them angry. But there's nothing they can do about it other than just watch them making great moves. Well, I'm going to discuss a few things in this video and let me start with this new footage of Megan's visit to the Southern California Welcome Project. You can see that Megan is cooking with them uh, and they look so happy. Megan did say that cooking is one of her favorite things to do. And it just so happens that cooking together and eating together are two great ways of forming a community. So inspired by her work with Hub Community Kitchen in the UK, Megan the Duchess of Sussex and the Actual Foundation launched the Welcome Project in 2023 to support women-led programming, creating a safe haven and inclusive environment for women who have recently resettled in the US from Afghanistan. And this video is from when Megan joined them for an evening of cooking and storytelling. And in collaboration with the Actual Foundation's partner, Mina's List, a group of 15 women gathered to cook traditional Afghan food including a shark and mantu. Following meal preparations, the women sat down to discuss their personal stories and the support they find from intergenerational group of women. In 2021, Mina's List help, uh, uh, helped evacuate and resettle over 2,000 Afghan women and families through independent and coalition efforts. With many women resettling in Southern California, Mina's List and the Actual Foundation joined forces to provide community and support to, to these remarkable women as they begin to rebuild their lives in the U.S., you know, one thing that I love about all this is that Megan has been a very great help to these women. She's not just a feminist. You know, Megan actually walks the talk. When she says something, she's going to do it. And you see that her life has been dedicated to helping women. She's been advocating for gender equality and she's never backed down on that. It's something that Megan did before marrying Prince Harry and after marrying him. And in another story, I found this very cute clip of one of the organizers of the Invictus Games 2025 in Vancouver, Canada. And she had so many beautiful things to say about Prince Harry and the organization of the whole event. Well, I'm going to put the link of the whole video in the description, but you can just listen to a bit of what she had to say about it all who is known around the world uh, and his wife Megan as well. What did they bring to it? How much of the heart of Invictus is built kind of around Harry's vision? It's Harry's heart. Yeah. The heart of Invictus is, is the Duke's heart. Um, and I, I got to see that. I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect when I came into this. I was really excited um, about the job, yeah. but I didn't know where the, the Duke would be and where he would play. I didn't know the patron. Um, we, what we got to experience, so in November, in that secret surprise yeah. experience, he came out and he wanted to sit with my team and go through every operating plan. We tromped him through all of the mountains, all of the venues, and he sat down and he just talked to us about his vision, how the most important thing we do is the competitor and are the family and friends. And in Canada, he is so concerned about how we link the Indigenous connection. For me, the part that I loved the most is when she said that it's Prince Harry's heart. The heart of Invictus is the Duke's heart. And honestly, I think all of us can see that the way Prince Harry 
cares so much about the Invictus Games, the way he cares so much about the veterans. It's as if this is his family. And it's truly Prince Harry's family because there are people who have all the good things to say about Prince Harry and how he has helped them over the years. The work that Prince Harry and all the team of We Are Invictus are doing it's like the most beautiful thing that I've seen in my entire existence. I just love when the media is very honest and transparent about the work that people are doing to help other people. I believe that if it was the UK media, then they'd not be talking in such a manner because they're so used to fabricating stories and forming something or some drama out of nothing. But you can see that the Canadian media is just telling it as it is. It is beautiful work that Prince Harry is doing together with We Are Invictors and we applaud them so much and appreciate all the good work that they are doing. And well, no wonder the, uh, the British media and the, uh, the royal family are so bitter about Prince Harry and they want him so aggressively to come back to the UK, maybe bring along the kids but leave Meghan in the US, which is something that is never going to happen. They are seeing how much the Sussexes are succeeding together in the US, how much they don't need the royal family anymore and it just makes them really mad. Was it Robert Jobson who said that the Invictus Games is never going to survive outside of the royal family? That is, when Harry um, stepped back from royal duties? Well, I think the Invictus Games is performing so much better now than ever. And I believe that they even want to expand to more countries. So does that sound like failure to me? No, it doesn't. That looks like much, much more success for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and everything that they're getting involved in. And instead of the British media and the royal family continuously saying how uh, Prince Harry wants to return to the UK, they should just say that, Harry, please bring your projects to the UK because we see as though it's going to benefit the royal family so much. That is what they need to say because all these stories about Harry wanting to come back to the UK are all made up. And they've been so desperate to bring Prince Harry back into that country, but I don't see anything working out. To the extent to which they even uh, used Heritage Foundation to um, demand for Prince Harry's visa records, which I think is the most absurd thing. You see, the Heritage Foundation has been engaged in a targeted harassment campaign against Prince Harry and the Heritage Foundation has marched into court multiple times to try and force the Department of Homeland Security to release Prince Harry's visa records. DHS has refused saying that every visa applicant has the right to privacy and Heritage's deranged argument is that Prince Harry wrote about using drugs in his memoir while Heritage was back in court on Friday and Department of Homeland Security's lawyers tried a new strategy. They were like, Harry could have been lying in his book, who even knows, a memoir is not a court of law. And I totally agree. I mean, a memoir is not sworn evidence. The judge can't just decide uh, based on a memoir unless the author of the book comes to court and swears under oath confirming that everything in the book, including that sector, is 100% true, which Prince Harry hasn't done. So this can't really be taken as evidence. And if these people want to talk about that, then maybe they should start with the likes of Kelly Osborne, Russell Brand, they all admitted to taking drugs. How about even Piers Morgan? He's acting as though he's now the, uh, the saint here, but some time back he said how he also took drugs. So these people should spare us all this because we all know why they are demanding for Prince Harry's records. It's because they want Prince Harry to be separated from his family, period. There's nothing more. And here is what was even written in the Times saying that the Duke of Sussex's admission in his memoir that he took drugs is not proof and could have been embellished 
uh, to sell his books, a lawyer for the U.S. government has urged in court. And the lawyer even said that just saying something in a book doesn't make it true. The princess book was written for a commercial audience and does not necessarily tell the full story. I applaud this. I knew that uh, Biden's government was going to protect Prince Harry at all costs. They're not going to let these predators feed on Prince Harry. And Judge Carl Nichols, overseeing the case, said earlier, uh, early in the hearing that he was uncomfortable referring to the Duke as Prince Harry, deciding that it was too informal. You would not call me Judge Carl, he told the court. I love what the judge said. You know, Prince Harry should be given the respect that he deserves. He deserves to be called the Duke of Sussex. So the ruling has not yet been made, but it will be, it will be made in a few weeks. And I'm loving the direction in which this is going. I don't see any probability of Heritage Foundation winning this case. I think they're just wasting their money. They should let go of this already because I think it's just a very evil plan. Trying to separate Prince Harry from his family? Who dares to do that? Anyway, I believe all their plans are going to fail and at the end of it, Niall Gardiner and his organization are just going to be ashamed. Well, let's just wait for the ruling, but I believe it's going to work in favor of Prince Harry. Well, that's just what I'm going to say for today. Kindly just leave your comments down below and I'll see you all on the next podcast. Have a wonderful and amazing time. Goodbye.